Hello and welcome to the video. In this video I want to talk about this model here. Now this is the Rooster 5 inch from Armatan. Now this is one of the almost ready to fly models that Armatan does. All of the pieces that go into this great little model are available separately from Armatan. So you can buy the frame separately, the ESCs, the flight controller, pretty much everything on here. But this is one of a small number of almost ready to fly models or bind and fly models that Armatan make and sell on their website. Now I need a bit of a confession here because the very first quadcopter that I ever bought after hovering around indoors with a little toy quad learning to fly after coming to multi-rotors from helicopters was an Armatan quadcopter. And that's this thing here. This is the Armatan 258 aluminium CNC, bought in January 2013. So I have been a fan of Armatan for quite a long time. And it's really fun to be able to look at one of their latest models, particularly when I've still got this original model from over five years ago now still in my collection. It's one of those things I just can't part with. It's old Simon K ESCs, old motors from back in the day when we didn't have custom motors built for quadcopters and the KK 2.0, one of the first real easy to set up flight controllers in the middle. But what we're going to do in this video is spend a lot more time looking at its great, 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 great grandson, the Rooster 5 inch. Now, if you're watching this video already, I'm sure you have watched a number of other videos where people have been flying the Armatan Rooster around and flying it like they stole it. The electronics in here are all very, very good and the frame is fab. So it's going to be no surprise at all that when they've put all this stuff together, it works really well, flies brilliantly and is tuned nicely straight out of the box as well. So if you're a pilot that's looking for an almost ready to fly or a bind and fly, then this represents a really nice option. So rather than we spend a ton of time talking about how this is and how it flies, what I'll do is spend the time in this video kind of helping those pilots like me who've got one of these who might be a little bit stuck. Spend a couple of minutes talking about the specs and then let's have a quick look at the differences between this frame versus its predecessor, the Chameleon, which is a slightly different frame, still available from Armatan and also another very good choice. But let's talk about the differences between it and let me spend a little bit of time going through the setup tips. So if you've got one of these things and it came like mine where there is no receiver installed, how do you go from there to have it zipping around your local flying field? Now, for those of you that have already watched loads of my setup videos, none of that stuff is going to be particularly new, but I'll put a time code here for those of you that want to skip the bits talking about the frame and get to the setup. And then for the rest of you that are hanging around, let's talk about the specs. So the specs in this thing, it's the Armatan Rooster 5 inch frame uh, available separately. You're also available in six inch versions too. This guy actually has the UMF 2205 2300 kV motors, although some of the pre-built models also available with the more powerful 2550 UMF motors on instead. 30 amp Armatan branded BL Heli S ESCs, Foxeer Predator mini camera in the front cage, Seal Racing F for S all-in-one flight controller, very capable flight controller. I know a lot of people had a problem with one particular version of the board, but this isn't it. And actually the CL racing boards are very, very capable flight controllers. A little mini VTX at the back, I always still be antenna, comes with cyclone props, which is awesome because I'm a big cyclone fan, landing pads under the arms, soft mounted flight controller, and then the pads and the straps and things for not only the battery, but the camera too. But let's talk a little bit about the difference between this thing and the Chameleon. Speaking to Armatan, a lot of the feedback on the original Chameleon frame was that people wanted separate arms. So that's part of the reason that those are available on this model. Uh, it has an insulated uh, video transmitter mount at the back. I actually took my mount off to route the cables for the antenna and it is electrically isolated. So if there's any rubbing going on or if you accidentally manage to put a screw too far into a motor mount or make a mess of your build, uh, you won't accidentally feed a ton of current and voltage back into the wrong place. The big difference of course with this over the Chameleon is the aluminium frame that was on the Chameleon has been upgraded to a titanium cage for the camera. Now believe it or not weight for weight it weighs the same as the original aluminium cage on the Chameleon but it's 75% stronger. 
and I was interested about how strong this cage actually is. And as of the time of the recording, I checked with Armatan and they haven't had a single warranty claim. And we'll talk about the Armatan lifetime warranty in a minute, because that's a really cool thing. That means that if you break anything on the frame, Armatan will replace it for free. They've also changed the way that the frame goes together. You need three different size tools to take all the bolts out of the chameleon frame. So at the field, if you wanted to pop the top off, uh, replace anything, swap things out, it was a whole bag of tools you needed. With the chameleon, everything's done with 1.5 millimeter hex drivers, apart from the prop nuts. So let me just quickly come back to that Armatan warranty. If you break anything, uh, on the frame then you can claim a replacement free of charge from Armatan. There's a process that you go through, I'll put a link in the description, go and have a look at there um, and also if uh, you have any problems with the bolts apparently the first couple of shipments of the original Rooster kits were shipping with a set of bolts that may have a little bit of a problem. If you have any problem with the bolts at all with your Rooster frame get in touch with Armatan because they've been sending out replacement bolts that are a much higher quality. So if you have had one of those original ones and you had problems with the bolts, get in touch with Armatan, you'll get replaced. You use the clear tubes at the back for routing the antennas. Uh, you just use a little bit of heat and you can put them in any orientation you like. Again, they're mounted in rubber grommets at the back and you can bend them out of the way. And the last thing is that the model is tuned out of the box. It's been tuned by Armatan, but it has been designed to run on very stiff props like the Cyclones that are included in the kit. So if you're going to buy spare props, make sure that you're getting the stiff props. Don't buy floppy props don't buy things like gem fan because the tune isn't optimized for those and you'll get a much better flying experience with the nice stiff props so let's very quickly go through the setup process so let's imagine that you are like me and you've just got your brand new armatan rooster and you're going to go through the setup process the first thing to do is to install the receiver if you need to in the model. Now you can order the models from Armatan. These pre-built ones can be ordered with a receiver of your choice. I ordered mine uh, without, so it comes with this little flying lead. It has a servo connector at the end, so you can plug it in any S-Bus receiver, or I actually clipped the end off and soldered it onto the back of a little XM Plus receiver that's gonna be just perfect for what I need to do. There is a little bit of room here underneath the top plate above the video transmitter, but you're not going to be able to fit a big receiver under the canopy. You're gonna to have to get a nice little one. Next thing to do is to create a model on your radio. Uh, most radios have some form of script or automatic setting, and you want the four basic controls, throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and most radios will create that for you automatically. I'd recommend that before you go any further, add three additional auxiliary switches. The first one you want to add I would assign to a three position switch and that is going to be used for setting your flight modes. The next switch I would add, select a three or two position switch and that will be used to arm the quad and when you arm the quad the props will immediately start spinning so you need to have that somewhere that's been your fail safe or oh dear switch for a long time. And I would recommend finally because this little quad has a buzzer underneath also setting up a momentary switch as the third auxiliary channel and that way then you're ready to go into the setup in beta flight. Once you've got that stuff set on the radio then go through whichever process it is to bind the receiver. Now the nice thing is is the flight controller that Armatan are using in this the CL flight controller powers the radio when you plug the USB cable in. So you don't need to apply the main power if you just hold the bind button or put the bind plug in or whatever the process is for the radio you're using plug in the USB cable while it's plugged into your computer, it will power the flight controller and power the receiver. And when you finish the buying process, you can go into beta flight and do the main parts of the configuration. If you don't know where to download beta flight from, I'll put a link in the description. So you'll need to download it and install it onto your computer. So again, making sure that at this point you haven't installed the props, you don't want to install the props until the very last part, you're going to plug the flight controller back into your computer while you've got beta flight open. Make sure that your radio is turned on and that it's bound to that receiver because we're going to go through and tell the flight controller inside the Armatan Rooster how the radio is set up. So the first thing we're gonna to go to is go into the receiver tab 
and move all of the controls around on the radio and we should see everything moving on the screen. If we don't see everything moving on the screen, then what you need to do is double check that in the configuration settings that you have ESPA selected. But as it comes from the factory from Armatan, it should be set up already. So the only problem you should find is that the channels might be moving in the wrong way. So for example, if you move the aileron, the, one of the other channels work. If you lift the throttle up and down, one of the other channels might move. If that's the case, it's dead easy. All you do is just change this thing called the channel map, and that will change the order that the channels are being read from the ESPA stream that's coming in from the receiver, and just try each of those in turn until you find the right one. Once you've got that done, double check the direction of travel. So I would recommend that you hold both of the sticks in the lower left-hand position. I'm using a mode two radio here, so I've got my throttle on the left-hand side, but if you hold both the sticks in the lower left-hand side position, you should find that all the four main channels go to their lowest position. And that means that you've got them the right way round. If one of the channels is going in the opposite way and doesn't go to its lowest position when you've got both of the control sticks on your radio to the lower left hand side then you'll need to reverse that channel in your radio and look to your radio's manual for how you reverse the channel that's wrong now you've done that the next thing we need to do is do the sub trim now the sub trim is used on the main flight controls aileron elevator and rudder to make sure that when those sticks are in the middle position on your radio that the flight controller is seeing a value of 1500 or as close as you possibly can now the reason for that is that 1500 is considered by the flight controller to be the middle neutral position and is read by the flight controller as you don't want to go in any direction if your radio is sending 1450 or 1550, then what the flight controller thinks it's hearing from your radio is you want to go in a particular direction. And if you don't get this bit right, your quadcopter will drift about. So have a look again for the manual for your radio. Go into the sub trim for the aileron elevator and rudder channel and change the sub trim until each of those values with the sticks in the middle are as close to 1500 as you can possibly get. You might find that they flicker out a point or two either side. That's fine, that won't really affect how it flies, but just change the sub trim on each of those three channels until it's as close as you can get it. Next job is to just check the travel. Now, if we hold the sticks to the lower left hand position and then to put them up to the top right hand position on both of the sticks on the radio, you'll see that my radio, and this is pretty classic if you're using an OpenTX Tyrannus, is overdriving the channels horrendously. So what we need to do is use the end point or travel adjustment on your radio so that the four main channels, throttle, elevator, aileron and rudder, go the lowest value doesn't go below 1000 and their highest value doesn't go below 2000 set those individually on the radio until that's the case double check that that's all working tickety boo and that's fine and once you've got that done then you are ready for the next step you've done most of the hard work in terms of the setup in beta flight go into the modes tab and you want to assign an arming switch so make sure that you are flicking the switch that you want to use for arming the trick here is that the channel value for the auxiliary channel that you are interested in is denoted by the little orange indicator. So as you flick the switch on the radio, you should see that little orange indicator move around. And what you're doing is moving the sliders to encompass the range that you want that mode to be active for. Similarly, go and set up the modes. Uh, on mine, just by default, angle mode is on the low position for the mode switch and air mode is turned on for the very top position. And what I've done is set auxiliary one, which is my channel five, is my mode switch. I'm setting it so in the low position, I've got angle, middle position, I've got horizon, and in top position, I haven't got any mode selected at all, which would give me rate mode, which is what most people who are hooting around and doing all that freestyle stuff will be flying in. I'm also turning on air mode when I go into either horizon or rate mode. And I'm also assigning auxiliary three to be my buzzer switch. So if it accidentally lands in long grass, I can flick that little momentary switch on auxiliary three and it'll make a loud buzzing noise that'll help me find it. So when you've got everything ready, if you're flicking the switch and it doesn't appear to be activating, you can see what modes are activated because they go orange in the left hand side, then make sure that you're clicking the save button in the lower right hand side of the screen before you come out of that. 
Now you've done the hard stuff. All you need to do is set the failsafe on your radio for the new middle channel positions. And I tend to, whenever I'm doing failsafe, make sure that things like the channel that's going to activate the buzzer is turned on. So if ever there's a connection loss with the radio, um, the flight controller will normally spot that and start to complain through the buzzer anyway. But I like to also double check it and set it with the failsafe. And then the last job to, before we go out and fly is to install the propellers. Now this can catch a lot of pilots out because after doing all that complicated stuff in beta flight, you pop the propellers on and it's easy to get them upside down or the wrong way round. So you want the propellers that are going to turn clockwise and that means the ones that are going to, as if you imagine them turning, are going to push air down towards the desk that you're on. They're going to go in the top left motor position and the bottom right motor position when the quadcopter is facing away from you. So they're going to be diagonally the same. So put those in. You'll notice that for those props, the screw seems to turn the wrong way to connect them on. And that's exactly what you expect. It's designed so that the prop nut is auto tightening. It isn't going to spin off and release the prop. It's going to stay in place. And once you've got those two clockwise props in place, again, making sure that any printing on the props is facing upwards, then the other two props in the kit are going to go onto the other two arms. So that's the front right and the back left prop. You'll find that those have normal screw threads. So you release and tighten those bolts, any standard right hand screw thread. Now I've done that, the last job is to charge a battery. Make sure that you can install it and the battery strap isn't catching anything underneath. I personally would recommend for the first time, just being a little bit cautious, going out over some nice long grass, making sure that the props are clear of that grass and just having a couple of minute hover, making sure that all of the controls are working as you expect them to and that, that you get a feel for how responsive the model is. And later on, you can start to tweak the tune that's automatically on the model here by changing things like the RC rates to change how sensitive it is. Also changing things like exponential too. But for now, you should be set up and ready to go and fly. So once you've got the hang of it, then it's time to let it off the hook. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.